From New York, it's that Kevin show. See, I knew it. Ah, uh, come on, Kev. What's a few classified documents between friends? I told you. I told you all the time. I knew it. I knew he had some, too. Here he is. That Kevin. Kevin McCullough. My next guest is someone that I came to have great admiration for when he was a, a governor of a Midwestern state many, many, many years ago. In fact, it's been over 20 years, I think, since that uh, was the case. Uh, he ran for president. Uh, I loved talking to him on my show at that time, and he's done a lot of really good work in recent years uh, for the Trump administration on religious liberty on the global scale. And uh, there's even a, a fun little uh, anecdote that he he might remember, he might not, that uh, he, his name was used to uh, help propose to my wife <laughs> many years ago uh, <laughs> under a very false uh, pretense. Uh, I, I, now I need to hear this story. I haven't well, heard this. Well, uh, former Senator Ambassador Sam Brownback, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Kevin. A pleasure. Yeah. So my my bride married. and I did did relay this to you a number of, and I'll tell the short version. But she was working for Salem headquarters out in Camarillo. Um, David Spady was the political liaison there at the time, and um, I had arranged this top secret engagement, harebrained scheme. I was coming from Chicago, flying out there, but the pretense was that um, that she was going to carry a check on behalf of the political action committee to a very important dinner in which Senator Sam Brownback was going to be in attendance. And so the the, the envelope actually had your name on it. Uh, and that's what she walked into when she walked into <laughs> just me at a table with a big pile of roses and eventually a, a ring that was unveiled. So thank you for your unknowing support of my early nuptials. <laughs> well, I hope it's been a very fruitful, good marriage. 20 years this year, actually. So we're, there we're you very... go. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Um, Ambassador, it's great to see you again. Um, I know that you in the Trump years were focused on religious liberties. Um, my very good friends at Christian Solidarity have been very concerned about the situation with the Armenians that are somewhat uh, encased in the Azerbaijan region. We'll get to that in a second. But from your days in the religious liberty arena, and it's always been a passion of yours, what are we seeing globally from where you sit as it is on planet Earth right now? You know, we're seeing a huge amount of persecution. We're seeing the most Christian persecution in the history of the faith. The history of Christendom is taking place right now. It's got a lot of different varieties of it, from people being killed to really a lot more subtle uh, forms taking place. Uh, but it's just at a record level. And uh, yet at the same time, we've got kind of this uh, uh, growing interest, support for religious freedom as a fundamental human right. And even for many of us, the cornerstone human right, if they can get this one right, you can build the rest of your human rights uh, doctrine off of it. Mm. So, you know, I think it's it's one of those situations where you just really have a tough situation, but there's now kind of the, the cavalry starting to come together and charge the hill. Well, one of the things that my listeners and viewers have been very familiar with is that we've been liberating sl enslaved people from northern Sudan with Christian solidarity for a number of years, but they're active in a number of other countries uh, and I'm curious, as you were on this issue, and I think during the Trump administration that Secretary of State and former CIA Director uh, Mike Pompeo was also very, um, very, very warm on this issue, if not hot in terms of its importance. Um, how would you, A, B, compare the Trump years to what the Biden team is now doing? The, the Trump years were kind of the launch of religious freedom being a cornerstone human rights and a cornerstone foreign policy issue from being kind of a boutique issue that, okay, some Christians are interested in it, but it's not a mainstream foreign policy issue. It's now gone mainstream, at least for conservatives and people in the Republican side. And, and more and more people are seeing that it's the, the root um, way to prevent genocide most genocides are of religious minorities. Mm. And so if you have religious freedom, pluralism, the protection of religious rights uh, for everybody all the time, it prevents genocide. And where you don't have it, you get crimes against humanity and genocide. So we've really made some real progress there. Unfortunately, on the Democrat side, they're for religious freedom, but it's kind of one of a whole bunch of human rights, and it doesn't have any special place uh, for anybody. So this was a cornerstone issue for the Trump years. 
and not so much so for the Biden. They're, they're kind of more concerned with uh, equal protection of pronouns now, as opposed to uh, religious liberties. And I think They've that it a is a whole bunch of them. Yeah, <laughs> lots of pronouns. Um, well, and here's the thing, um, Ambassador. the The issue is that if you come from a political worldview, forget the word political. If you just come from a worldview that does not embrace the imago day of the human being, the inherent goodness of faith in God and just the, the potential for what that means to the human experience. If it's not a priority to you, then being persecuted for it kind of just falls on dead nerve endings, doesn't it? I, I wouldn't say it falls on dead nerve endings, but it just becomes a lesser issue to you. Uh, it's significant because somebody's being persecuted, uh, that the Uyghurs are being persecuted by the Chinese has a multiple set of foreign policy implications and practical uh, impact on people. And so the Biden administration supported the genocide determination that Secretary Pompeo had made. But it's not kind of like the centerpiece that, that you go at. And to understand communist China, you got to remember they are at war with all faiths because right. religion is the one institution that can actually stand up to a government. And they don't want that. And they saw the Soviet Union be taken down by religious people generally or by a religion, whether it's the, the Catholics in Poland or the refused Nicks in Russia. Uh, so they they read the play, last playbook, and they're not going to fall for that one. And so they're at war with all faiths. So to understand really the Chinese worldview right now, the Chinese communist worldview, you have to understand their antipathy for religion. Right. Um, you just returned from a fact-finding mission, and just yesterday you uh, reported back to a congressional uh, meeting of some sort. I'll, I'll have you classify the meeting in a second. But the um, when you went to Armenia and you met with people concerning what some of their folks are facing in Azerbaijan, what was what did you what did you discover? What were your eyes open to? They think a genocide is setting up in uh, Armenia, and particularly for the people of Nagorno Karabakh that are Armenian Christians, and they think it's going to be the second Armenian genocide after the 1915 one that killed 1.5 million Armenian Christians by. The Ottoman Muslim Turks, uh, they, same they, people they're at war with, or that that are at war with them now. The apple hadn't fallen far from the tree, and my experience in foreign policy and around people is that that history is kind of the roots and the legacy of what you're going to see today in the tree. Hmm. Um, and you just that same hatred, that same dismay, that same different people here that we don't want here. That's what's happening in Nagar Karabakh to about 120,000 Armenian Christians that they've got blockaded right now, Azerbaijan does, with the backing of Turkey and the allowance of Russia. Russia is allowing this to happen. They've been historically the protectors. They're not protecting it. And the Azeris are just trying to squeeze them out. And that's when what we can take place when we come back, I want to ask you what is being done about this on the national and international scale, and then also ask you what we can do as individuals. We're speaking with Ambassador Sam Brownback, who served as the Ambassador for Religious Freedom under the Trump administration. He was also a former presidential candidate and well-beloved senator and governor from the state of Kansas. Uh, stay with us. Coming right back. Ready or not, you'll be right back. That. 